Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so I was working on part 2 video from uh, those Infinite Displays uh, series, uh, but I thought maybe uh, I could show you my experiments with SD3 and uh, talk about the restrictions and current problems you might be facing when uh, using this. Um, I made some cool images, uh, in some cases he actually uh, exceeded my expectations. Uh, we're also gonna compare it with the uh, STXL workflow and how different prompting is in each of them. Uh, I'll post the other video this weekend sometime uh, with CG elements and you know image generation. Uh, okay, so let's just get started uh, with basic setup. Okay, so to get started with uh, SD3, you can find all the information on uh, Comfy Anonymous GitHub.io page. Uh, I'll include the link as well. Um, you can find all the instructions, the model you need to download, and uh, everything you need to follow to make it work. Uh, this link takes you to where you can download all the necessary models, uh, download the ones that include the clip encoder too. Uh, or you can choose the one without the clip encoder and then uh, you would have to uh, download it separately and uh, it's going to be a different workflow to load that too. Um, T5XXL is the heaviest one. Uh, it's just a large uh, language model trained on massive text data so you can you know, understand your prompt more, more precisely. And uh, FP16 is just the resolution of the model which makes it more, more accurate. And after that, uh, to get started, you can just drag this uh, image into your uh, Comfy UI space. And this is how you get the basic workflow. First of all, you need to use the empty SD3 latent image. So it's different from empty latent image, this node. So you need to use that one. Uh, the dimensions uh, should be the multiple of uh, 64. Uh, this is ideal, but I've used different aspect ratios too, and sometimes you have to do that just to cheat the model. Uh, the negative prompt, as you see, is empty because uh, SD3 doesn't like negative prompts, so don't use them as much as uh, you can. Uh, but there are like ways you can you can actually use this too. Uh, as far as the sampler, um, the only ones that actually work is the Euler and uh, DPM um, PP2M. So none of the SDEs or Ancestral uh, would work. And the scheduler, this is the only one um, SGM uniform that works. You need to keep the CFG between like 4.5 to 5.5. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. Although it's been recommended to use the SD3 model sampling too. And it's at three by default, but uh, you can get like sometimes better results at one or two. And the way it works, you connect it to the model and uh, this goes to your case sampler. So now let's Let's test it out. I'm gonna remove this. Just create a preview image. So I downloaded everything and put them under uh, SD3. So I'm gonna pick this one. There we go. Now let's just go by default. All right, let's create. Fantastic. Okay, let's see. All right, this is pretty cool. Just use a different aspect ratio. I'm gonna do 960 by uh, 960 by uh, what's the oh, 
5.44, okay. 9.60, Alright, that's pretty cool. Let me make two batch. At the same time. Let's see if this makes a difference. Let's boot up one. All right, so it's just different. You know, there is no like better or worse. Uh, let me see if I. Um I want to I want to combine two different styles. Let me see if I can uh, make a, a cartoon. Bunny sitting. Let's see if he understands this. Yeah, this is very cool, but it's not what I meant. Uh, I want to see if I can change the the look of uh, have like two separate uh, styles, like a 2D cartoony uh, sketch for the bunny and uh, in a real environment. I'm not sure if it works. Uh, I mean, I've done it before, but you need to know how to describe it. As you see, uh, I have a 2D bunny, uh, almost like a sketch in a real environment, and a uh, sketch of a bunny, a vintage uh, 1950s display of bunny sitting in a backseat of a taxi in New York City, and uh, these are the other images I made. It's almost like a, you need to get lucky sometimes with the seed. This is this is awesome. Yeah, definitely the the shading and a render of the of the bunny is different from the environment, but uh, it's just a lot of a lot of trials uh, to make it work. But what I want to do, I want to compare it with a STXL. So I'm just gonna okay. I'm gonna copy, paste. We don't need this. It just to make it uh, a little more organized. Uh, we need a normal empty latent image. And I'm going to switch to SDXL. XL and uh, keep the exact same prompt. And uh, we're gonna go to, to MSD and Keras. Yeah, these are super cool. Okay, they look like weird toys, uh, and it's black and white for some reason. Uh, could be because I wrote uh, vintage. Uh, you thought uh, I meant vintage photo or old photo or something like that. But also, yeah, let me fix that and uh, let me add uh, some negative prompts too.
yeah, it kind of worked, but uh, still turned out black and white. So I'm gonna add um, color 35 uh, millimeter uh, film, and that should fix it. Yeah, it kind of worked, but as you see, they are uh, very different the way you describe and prioritize your text prompt, and it just takes a little getting used to. Um, but also, let me show you how to incorporate the negative prompt for SD3, because you can't use negative prompt for the entire process, it's too strong. So you need to use it only at 10 or 15% of the time step. Uh, so we need to like break it down into two separate uh, sections, one no text prompt, one no negative prompt, and one uh, negative prompt, and then you can switch on only for, uh, let's say, 10% of the process. We're going to incorporate the uh, zero out, conditioning zero out, which means like whatever you put here right now, it's a null, it's just nothing. So I'm going to just put some combinations. Let's just test it out by itself, like, let me just pause this, go back to this guy. Okay, so, let me see if I, like, bunny. let me see if I can remove it. Yeah, it doesn't really understand, you know, what you want, but if you just do like maybe, uh, okay, so this is how it's been recommended. If I use a, a conditioning zero out, which is right now it makes it a null, and then connect it to a... Conditioning... Time step range. So I want to have it, have this or ignore it for the majority of my uh, process, uh, which is from 10% to the rest of the uh, rest of the process, and um, and use my negative prompt only for the first 10% uh, of it, and now we can combine. And uh, so I was I was playing with this for a few minutes, and no matter what I did, I couldn't remove the bunny from the image. Uh, however, when I added a taxi, it removed the taxi sign from the images. So it works for some uh, specific prompts, but it doesn't understand some other texts. Uh, yeah, there is no guarantee for any of this. So as you see, when I removed the uh, taxi from negative prompt, it brought it back. So this is uh, another example, uh, I've been testing SD3 with some other concepts as well, some of them turn out pretty cool, and I wasn't able to recreate those using SDXL. Uh, it just needs a different approach like we implemented uh, with the bunny situation. Uh, I love the combination of old cartoony posters, old uh, graphic design uh, type of posters, uh, and cinematic environments, um, so it just requires more more fine-tuning your text prompt and, um, you know, using different samplers and things like that to make it work. Yeah, there are just so many combinations you can try and uh, I'm pretty sure you can, you can uh, recreate everything. At some cases though, uh, you know, SD3 doesn't work. Uh, 
I mean, I'm getting lucky uh, with hands and stuff like that, but most of the time, it just uh, so much like deformity and uh, like weird angles and things like that that you need to like find like hacky ways to to work around it. But uh, I mean, definitely there are like some flaws and you know underlying problems going on that you know we don't know about. But uh, yeah, there you have it. By the way, just a quick tip uh, before moving on. So if you're like creating like multiple batches and uh, you, you want to save like one of them, uh, it starts with zero and then one, two, three. So you can use the image from batch node. And for example, like in this case, I want to use, I want to save this uh, image and uh, I use uh, batch index one. And uh, there you go. Now I can, you know, save this image. All right. Uh, also, by the way, um, uh, I also made uh, these images, which I very, very uh, honestly uh, impressed by, and uh, just gonna combine into different styles, uh, just the way we did before. And I made a quick animation using this one, using Luma and uh, Conf UI. Yeah, I love it when it works. Um, just for the most part, uh, I guess Luma AI hasn't been very cooperative. Uh, always the first couple of seconds is okay, but then either you know gets super blurry or it follows a different storyline for some reason. Like move the camera very abruptly and like follows a, a different uh, different subject. But anyway, uh, you know when it works, it works. Okay, as I mentioned uh, at the start of this video. This, this one uh, was supposed to be part two of those uh, displays, um, the image generation part and some animation concepts, but uh, we covered a few important things and I didn't want to skip them. So I guess we'll call this uh, video Stable Diffusion 3 uh, workflow and you know uh, creative experiments and I'll post the other one uh, this coming weekend. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to bring in uh, my Houdini renders and uh, we're going to experiment with workflows to see how we can create the concepts I, I developed for the you know, underground metro station and at this place and we're going to cover some concepts about uh, animation and you know, stuff like that too. So, okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.